All right, welcome everybody to Latinos in Clinical Research monthly webinar. We have today a very, very special guest. It's a team from Eli Lilly, a company that is committed to, uh, dedicated to make a difference in the world. The company that developed the very first insulin, uh, insulin commercially produced insulin in 1923 a company that is committed to diversity and um, actually uh, rank number three in the top uh, 50 companies for diversity in 2020. So we have here uh, a lightly lead team. And uh, we're gonna start, uh, we have uh, today uh, with us uh, very special members. Uh, we have Amparo de la Peña. She was born in Uruguay and uh, works as an asset uh, for manager and uh, COO and the senior research advisor. Then we have Cecil Gonzalez, um, is an advisor in the design hub. And then we have Roberto Ca Cabarillo um, as a, the, the diverse talent scout and advocate. And also we have Santi, <laughs> which it was our Santi Alexander, she was our very first contact, point of contact with a light lily. So here we are. Awesome. Thank you so much, Monica, for that introduction. And before we get started and before we allow the guest speakers to introduce themselves, we're going to go ahead and share a video from Eli Lilly that we would love for all of y'all to see. Innovation is driven from different perspectives in LRL. The thing that I see the most is the value of different backgrounds we always bring to Lili. My name is Selene Hernandez Buque. I started at Lili about four years ago. While the company is very diverse, there's still not a lot of people who are Latino or Hispanic. Innovation is everything for us as scientists, right? When you have diverse set of scientists from different cultural backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, it allows for that innovation to grow further and actually tackle more questions. We can show Hispanics and Latinos that there are people that look like them at Lilly. You know, they can be scientists. My name is Olympia. There is something that I see evolving since I joined Lilly back in 2008. Stronger commitment to making diversity intentional in this company. I do feel that I can bring myself to work every day. I never felt differently. I'm changing roles and I'm interacting with different people. They somehow change me as well, but they never change who I am and my values. I don't see a reason or pressure that I would have to change that. My name is Maria Alvin Gaston. I joined Lily 21 years ago. I can tell you now, I feel much more comfortable to come to Lily and speak with my heavy accent. Or I don't have to sit in my hands anymore because people accept that I am Maria and I speak making gestures. And it may not sound that is something important, but when you have to change yourself every day to fit in a norm, it is exhausting. And it feels so good not have to do that. My name is Amparo de la Peña. I started 21 years ago. Lily really became our family away from home because we don't have any family in, in town. Everybody's mostly out of the country. All the facilities that were provided by Lily were really crucial from daycare. I mean, there was at one point, all of my children were in daycare. Knowing that you could drop them off, be at a walking distance, a block away, and that they'll be safe and well cared for is, is priceless. Having that support of friendships that have lasted a lifetime is really what happens in my country of origin. I, I couldn't have done it better if I had my family with me. My name is David Garcia Tapia. Working for Lily was kind of a dream coming true for me. There are a lot of uh, opportunities that I can take in, in LRL. From the professional point of view, every time you are assigned to a project is a, a, an opportunity. Every day is different. Looking at data from toxicology studies in front of the microscope, looking at slides, a lot of communication with teams, reporting the results. I will say that nothing is monotonous. The company invests in our professional development. I think that gives you the sense of being appreciated. 
I was very happy to prove that the quality of the company was not only in the medicines, but also in the way they treat people, in their social responsibility. The ethics of working and the philosophy of working is so high in, in, in this company. My name is Cecile Gonzalez Saramelli. I work here because we do very meaningful work, because there are people out there that are part of my family that have benefited from the medicines that we make. What we do matters. It matters to people that we interact with, it matters to people in our families, and it matters to the world. Awesome, well, thank you so much. That was an amazing video. Really, uh, I personally really loved it when I first watched it. So thank you so much, Eli Lily. Um, so as we said, you know, great introduction. Now, if you know the, each speaker would like to introduce themselves, give a little bit of background on them, uh, we would be happy to hear it. And maybe we can start with uh, uh, Roberto. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Carvallido. Thank you for be, uh, inviting me today to participate. As Monica mentioned, I'm in the talent acquisition space. I'm a diversity talent scout for Eli Lilly. My background is in HR for the last 15 years. I'm very passionate about diversity and inclusion, and I'm, a very ad and I'm an advocate for the Latinx community. I believe that we will make a, a tremendous impact very, very soon to this country, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, Cecile, you would like to go next? Gracias. Uh, my name is Cecile Gonzalez Cerimele. Uh, I am uh, originally from Puerto Rico and I married a, uh, an Italian. So we got some spicy blood uh, here in the family. And um, I have been with Lily for 31 years. And I would say that my journey is probably one of, uh, of a few where I started in the company as a summer hire, uh, then moved as a summer intern, and then ultimately as a, as a full-time employee. And I've been very blessed to have been in a number of different roles here with the company. And I am always uh, very much aware of the fact that I don't always look Latina. Um, but, uh, but trust me, deep down inside, uh, it's 100%. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come and talk to you today about um, what we do and um, how we can make um, our workplace a better place. Well, thank you so much. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Cecile. Now we have Amparo de la Peña. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, hi, thank you. My, my name is Amparo de la Peña, with an N -E, and uh, that's, that's something I make an emphasis always because it, it makes a big difference in the meaning of uh, my name, having the N -E or, or not having it. But not, not always we get the, the right spelling in, in the English systems. I, I've been with Lily for 21 years, as of a couple of days ago, and uh, started... Um, I started my career in Uruguay where I got my chemistry and pharmacy degrees. And then I came to study in the University of Florida where I did my, my PhD work and then got hired by Lily right, right out of college. And uh, I've been fortunate to work in several different therapeutic areas from the insulins that you were mentioning before to neurosciences, to even orphan disease spaces. And uh, since, uh, 2014, I moved to Chorus, which is a, a place that does early development from early phase to group of concept. And uh, there I work both as a scientist and as an asset manager as well. So very, very, very happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. And, and finally, we have Santi Alexander. <laughs> We can't hear you, Santi. Uh, you gotta unmute yourself. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> My name is Santi Alexander. I've been with Lily for over 21 years. I'm a diversity talent scout with Roberto. Um, previously, before doing this role, I was a diabetes sales representative in the Northeast for over 10 years. 
and just transition to this new world. So we're excited and happy to be here tonight with everyone. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, you guys. We're really happy that you're here. Um, I, I know I don't speak just speak for the whole group, right? But uh, we're really excited to hear what every, you have to say and, and uh, we'd like to just get straight into it. So uh, first question, uh, if you can please provide, um, whoever would like to take this question, if you can please provide us a little bit of insight of Eli Lilly, you know, who the company is, uh, what you stand for, your mission, your vision, all of that. I mean, I can jump ahead. I mean, and I will give you probably, I don't want to give you like uh, the whole little details because I want to make sure that we maximize the time, but I will give you a quick glance of, of Lily. Uh, it is a company that has been in business for almost 150 years. Uh, we go back from uh, 1876. Uh, we're based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yes, we are a Midwest uh, organization. We have approximately close to 40,000, 39,000 employees worldwide. We have a big footprint. And of course, we are a pharmaceutical company. And because of that, we have a large part of our employees engaged in research and development, approximately 8,000 of them. One of the things that I also want to share is we have clinical research happening in more than 55 countries. As well, we have facilities in, for research in seven different countries and also, the, also like another seven, but we have manufacturing plants strategically, strategically located in seven different countries. Our products have a, a, a global footprint. We are marketed in one, about 100, 120 uh, different uh, countries uh, worldwide and probably continue to grow. <laughs> wow, awesome. very impressive. <laughs> That's definitely. Um, so I guess next is like, how committed is your company to the workforce and diversity and inclusion? You know, what are you doing to promote uh, this diversity and inclusion internally at the moment? Because I know this is a really big topic. Um, this is very happening right now. Uh, all, most companies are really trying to focus on this. And so specifically for Eli Lilly, uh, what are you, how are you focusing on this issue? I will take that a question. I mean, the work that Lilly is doing in regards to diversity, inclusion, and equity it is uh, an effort of multiple people, uh, multiple levels of the organization is fully supported by our CEO. Uh, we have, uh, of course, we are not a perfect company, but I think uh, there's a lot of support and really a commitment with this part. As Monica mentioned at the beginning, probably was not a very, uh, a very uh, explained, but we were a name like a, the Diversity Inc. number three. Uh, we won that award. Uh, Diversity Inc. has a very high standards uh, in their selection process for a uh, diversity representation. And Lily won, uh, again, the number three this year on World 2020. And uh, yeah, we, we, as I mentioned, we're not perfect, but we're doing a lot of different things just to make sure that not only bring diverse talent into the company, we want to make sure that also that diverse talent within the company have access to opportunity promotions to have progression in their career, also to keep them in the company, to retain them. I mean, it is, I mean, I could keep, I mean, I could probably talk hours about what Lily is doing, but it is not just one group, not one person. We have a, multiple groups of people, also managers are involved and everyone is part of the culture. We live and breathe diversity at Lily. That's great. Okay, mm -hmm. so what, what is it like really doing externally to recruit diverse clinical researchers to the um, to the company? Wow. Well, I mean, there's there is not like a, a perfect recipe. I mean, if we understand that, for example, a unrepresented a professionals in science, it, it is a little more pool of, of, of qualified individuals, and sometimes they're not easy to find. But we have a kind of like a, a multi-pro, multi-way approach. We participate in events like right now we are here. Uh, that's one of them. We also do like a proactive sourcing talent pipeline and participating with different organizations. Of course, COVID had is is making things a, a little bit complicated uh, for us. But we're trying to connect in many different ways. For example, the group that is participating today, Amparo de la Peña, Cecil Gonzalez, they are part of a fantastic organization, uh, Lily Research Labs. And they have a lot of different initiatives that they, they, they're implementing. For example, the video that uh, you just uh, viewed just minutes ago. I mean, that's an example of what the work that they're doing. Um, but there's a lot of different things that we're doing. I mean, there's literally, we don't have like a perfect, uh, uh, like a, like a one-step process. I mean, we try everything and we cont continuously are evolving to have a more 
more things to attract and uh, that they were diverse. Talent. I I can't not hear any. Uh... We can hear you, Monica. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it's just that the last part that Roberto was saying, I got uh, I couldn't hear it. It probably was my phone, my my um <laughs> my headset. Okay, so what hurdles uh, are they encountering? Like are are, are uh, the teens encountering when diversifying the the their diverse? Uh, I mean their workforce. Oh, I, I love that question, Monica, because that's a reality. That's something that I, I, for all the people participating in this call, everyone has some work to do in the, in the good way. We need to participate more. In this space, Latinx and unrepresented population, unfortunately, they're not as active as we will hope. And what that translates is that we cannot find you. And you may have the expertise, all the passion for doing the job in the pharma industry or any other industry, but when we, for example, a, a talent professionals are looking for you, we cannot find you. And, a, and probably I understand we have a life, we have our families, and we may not be able to participate in, in events like this one, but everyone has the power of the fingertips of different social networks. One of them that I, I, I preach is LinkedIn. I mean, if you have a curriculum, if you have your, your resume ready, make sure that you have that information in your profile make that work easy for us. If people want to have that representation, but if we're not able to find you, I mean, it, this, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible. I mean, we, we, we cannot, we are not there yet in the mind reading business just yet, but <laughs> it, it is having that presence online is, is very important. And it, something that I, I mean, I have a lot of tips and recommendations that probably we'll talk a little later, but having relevant information to be searched. I mean, if people are searching for you, not always machines. But Roberto, I think it's important right. like that that you mentioned some tips. Why not now? <laughs> yes, it, yes, because oh. you mentioned how it's hard for you to find these people, mm -hmm. um, but they're there. So, what are some, I guess, tips you can give to the people uh, watching? Uh, for example, if you're interested, for example, to work on a company like Eli Lilly, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The market is competitive. Uh, yes, we want representation, but uh, we want to get to hire the best of the best. And what I recommend, and it is kind of like a, a learning process, go into our career side, check what opportunities do we have in, in the science or in the clinical area. The titles could be different between pharma companies. I mean, there could be different. That's why I recommend you to literally go and check that job description. Very important. Make sure that you read the basic qualifications of that position because it, that is the first step. If you, I mean, if let's say that we're asking for a position, I'm just making it up. If we're asking for that person to have three years of experience in clinical trial, trials, we are going to ask that. And that is our, our threshold. We will not consider you for the job if you don't have those three years of experience. But on the other hand, there are other positions that they don't require a significant experience or only requires a, ba requires a bachelor's. But that is the first step, making sure that you have those requirements. Second, make sure that your resume that you're gonna be using to apply has that information, something that unfortunately happens very often and you will be surprised. And it happens because some people enter into the application fatigue. They're applying, receiving no, applying, receiving no, applying, receiving no. And sometimes people say like, I'm just going to apply, but they use a resume that probably is not relevant for the recruiter. At Lily, we take recruitment seriously and we review each application depending on the order that they come through. And if we don't see those qualifications, I mean, it's not that we don't want you, it's that you, you, you don't have the requirements and we cannot consider you. And that tip, I mean, once you have that, I mean, once you get familiar with the words or the requirements for Lily jobs, make sure if that you have that experience, put it on your LinkedIn profile. Recruiters are gonna look for those skills, those specific words. And if you have those on your profile, you're gonna pop up. Roberto, one question. And is this, um, it, 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 does a light really had like, uh, like truly entry level positions? Yes, and there's, there's a, we have internships for, 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 a, for individuals. We have like a entry level positions, a, but as I mentioned, a, it is at a competitive market and it is up to the individuals to get into Lily. Uh, I have seen very successful stories of Latinx applicants getting into Lily but they network, 
they're like a go getters. I mean, probably they're going to probably have an uh, unsuccessful application one, two, three times, four times, but they keep going. I mean, this is a journey, but it's a journey that it is worth it. And maybe, I mean, it is probably easy to transition from an internship to a full time opportunity. But that uh, that is not the kind of like if you don't have an internship, at least is the end of the road. No, there's opportunities. I mean, you can see my example. I mean, it probably took me a, a long time to get into Lily, but I was able to do it. But it it requires consistency. But it is it is totally worth it. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But I mean, it it is competitive. No, I, That's I, why. I actually. Yeah. Sorry, and I actually love that you mentioned that because a lot of people think that they just sent one application and that's all. <laughs> Yeah. And and in this industry, like any other industry, you have to keep on persisting until you achieve what you want. I mean, it has to be, it, it, it's just the way it is. Yeah. And I guess I, I have wanted to ask something going. So if somebody say they want to work for Eli Lilly, but they don't have that experience. Like you mentioned, you know, a lot of the positions require some kind of experience, um, but they want to go there eventually. So what are your recommendations for that person? Maybe someone who's new to clinical research, maybe they kind of started working somewhere barely. Um, what do you recommend experience? Like, I mean, yeah, I guess what do you recommend that those type of people do? I mean, there's some conventional backgrounds, especially for for many well, many people. Perhaps it's not like a picture perfect to get into into Lily. If you're really serious into getting into Lily, just open your 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 uh, your horizons about Lily. I mean, your your scientific background it, it is relevant for us. Maybe you can start in a different functional area and then come back into a science into scientific role. What I give an example, you can you can leverage your expertise with sales. I mean, and you can grow very quickly and then get into in, into the scientific field. And that happens very often. I mean, but don't get discouraged just because you apply once and then they don't select you. I mean, it is it is people want to work a little and that is it, it is it is it is fantastic. But don't limit your your uh, your different paths just because you don't have that perfect position within Lily. That's what I'm trying to relate. And I'll add to that, um, that was a great point that Roberta brought about sales, because we have some candidates that come into sales who are Farm D, and they actually, their goal is to go with medical science liaison, but the entry level, like Roberta mentioned, is a great start to come in and sales representative as well. Great. Thank you so much for that. And, and, and I, I, I was, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. <laughs> go so ahead. I just want to make sure that for those that are listening, uh, we definitely will continue to make sure that we get... Um, all the speakers here and have their LinkedIn so that if you want to connect, right? And also if, if you would like us to, you know, send anything over to Santi or to any of uh, the speakers, please just let us know on the side, but go ahead, Monica. Yeah, I was going to mention also that I saw in the website uh, of Lily, this team for students is like an, is some kind of internship or something like that. Uh, can somebody elaborate a little bit about it? Because we have also a lot of young uh, community in our Latinos in clinical research that are just finishing uh, university and they are interested in this in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, uh, can somebody please explain us about that program? If, but I'm going to try to uh, answer that question. I mean, there's different. There's a lot of different opportunities at Lily for early career professionals, uh, and I want to reiterate, uh, it is it is a journey process. I mean, it may not be like a simple. But what my recommendation is for people to see what it is available, uh, to be prepared to to apply, it, because that's something that is happening. You don't want to wait to have your resume ready when that position comes up. It, something that happens into Lily, we can have several applications into a specific job, especially if it's an entry level job. And what we're going to usually do, or what we usually do, is we start to review positions as they come. And let's say that we have 100 applications. I mean, we cannot continue keeping receiving applications and review. We put a stop on the review, and potentially you will, let's say that we only review 50 applications. Uh, from 51 to 100, probably they're going to receive a decline because they came very late to the process. I mean, it is just to be serious and start to connect. And uh, I mean, we can, uh, uh, I mean, I can give some other tips probably in a later, later session, but it's just keep on the lookout and connecting with, with individuals, participate, even though you graduate already, probably keep on the look, the different events that Lily has 
and they can participate even in those events like close to the location in the different states around the nation as well. Roberto, how about the, the internship program for students? It, it, internship program is, is, is a, um, it, it depends on the functional area in science. I mean, it, we usually recruit the year before. For example, right now is a campus season. We are recruiting for, pe for students that they will have in an internship a, in a summer of 2022. Right now, we are recruiting for all of those internships. And that's why, I mean, the, the advice that I will give to anybody, even if you have family members that they're planning or thinking about what they're going to do next, um, it is good to start early about uh, talking about internships. I unfortunately, happens very often for the Latinx community. They will till the last minute to engage in these type of internships. And sometimes I'm not saying that it is too late, but it is going to take them a little bit longer to get into the workplace in the position or the company that they want to be. But it's not impossible. Yeah. And I have a question, sorry, in regards to that, the internship, like that information about the internships, how is that? Um, how do people know about that? Is that just on your website? Do you work with like schools? Like how does that work? We work with the schools and also we have our events or recruitment events uh, on our career site. You can check the calendar of events and you, you see the schools that we want to be close, uh, well, close uh, and you can participate. There's a lot of, right now, due to coronavirus, there's a lot of virtual events. Uh, there's a, a the Lily Day that is open to all students where they can participate. I mean, there's a lot of different events, but uh, 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 students, they need to be on top of it. For sure. Thank you so much for that. We do have one question from Luis Hernandez, um, um, and we we're going to wait for the Q&A, but since this is on the topic, she asked them how the application process looks like in terms of steps. Um, I know it might be different for everybody, but if you do have a general um, answer to that. It, it is basically, it's very simple. Uh, you're going to have a position. You're going to submit, you're going to review it. You're going to submit a resume, what is going to happen. The recruiter is going to review your application. Uh, is going to check for the basic qualifications. If you have those basic qualifications, is going to then review the preferences, those nice to nice to haves that the hiring manager is looking for. If your uh, additional requirements uh, there uh, there or re additional requirements there like a highlight, they will usually they will pa uh, pass you through a, a hiring manager to do a phone screen. And if if the phone screen goes well, you'll go into the formal interview processing. And if the outcome is great. Of course, you can get that opportunity with Lily. For sure. And um, does the internship, is it specifically for, you know, uh, recent college grads or, you know, uh, that are still undergraduates? Or can this also be for those, for instance, we have one uh, person here that's one member stating that um, they have a PhD, uh, they don't have any clinical research experience, but would they, could they still be considered for an internship? Yeah, we, we have... Uh, like a, all, all sorts of internships at Lilly with like a for, for a people that are going to get a PhD, master's degrees. I mean, a, but the, the information is outside. What I also recommend is, is connect with Lilly employees, ask them directly, show your interest um, and make start make those connections. A Lilly is high, is, is literally relationship is relationships are very important for Lilly. Don't be shy. I mean, the worst thing that can happen, a, probably you don't receive a response or you receive a no that I don't think that will happen, but a, just outreach outreach. I mean, but there's a lot of different uh, uh, internship programs at Lilly that uh, I don't want to take a lot of time to, to explain those because okay. I want to be respectful of Amparo and Cecil because they have a wealth of knowledge that I want you, your uh, participants to hear as well. For sure. Well, thank you so, so much. And we'll leave the rest of the questions for the Q&A, you guys. So let's go ahead and, and move forward because we want to make sure we use all this time that we have. Um, so next is the two Eli Lilly personnels. Uh, they will speak on the roles. Um, so uh, whoever would like to go first. Can you go first? Amparo, you want to go? No, no, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so my, my current role, I'm an advisor in the design hub. Uh, so what, what exactly does that mean? Uh, so we are responsible for uh, providing leadership on design options. Um, delivery and analysis of, uh, of existing uh, clinical data and curating some external data uh, to inform how best to conduct our clinical trials. So what, what exactly does that look like in practice? So uh, we're currently using the, um, the experiences that we had in the COVID space 
in order to design clinical trials that are more patient friendly and are able to reach a, a broader uh, patient demographic and population by creating a decentralized paradigm where essentially uh, there are times when the study can come to the patient uh, where we actually have mobile nurses and we've got uh, resources that come out to the homes in order to conduct certain procedures. Um, and the intent there is, you know, how do we make sure that we make research as accessible to as many people as possible uh, within the clinical trial space and uh, ensuring that we maintain the level of rigor and uh, patient oversight that we want to have and need to have in order to ensure that we conduct the right types of uh, clinical research. So that is one example of the work that we do in the design hub. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate it, thank you. Pleasure. Okay. And, um, I, and Amparo? So I can tell you a little bit about what I what I do as an asset manager and as a PKPD scientist, which are sort of two, two different roles that I <clears throat> excuse me that I have at the same time. So as an asset manager, I work with a multidisciplinary team that's composed by several different functions: medical, statistics, procurement, quality, clinical uh, research operations type people um, to plan and design the clinical trials in, in humans. And we, we work in chorus in the space from early phase, which could be the first time we give a dose in humans from, you know, we, we project those doses based on data from animal studies and from in vitro studies, we do some modeling and then we project what a safe starting dose would be. And then in the trials, we then escalate the doses based on what we observe for human safety, for example. And then we, we go from the designing of the studies to then obtaining the data. I mean, running the studies in the different clinics, obtaining the data, reporting that, and preparing the regulatory documents that then go to FDA or to the Europe regulatory bodies or other different geographies. And we answer the questions that, that they would have. And um, in, my, in my previous life, when I was in a different department, I would then follow that process all the way to this, the final submission for approval from FDA, for example, and from other regulatories. And that's how we got the approval of um, a couple of uh, medicines that are in the market right now. One of them is dulaglutide that I, I was leading the PKPD team on. And the other one was Humalog uh, U200, which is a concentrated form of insulin lyspro. So that's so that's sort of a mixture between the asset manager and the PKPD role. Those are very interesting, <laughs> interesting roles, very interesting roles. And it's also very refreshing to see um, the Latino representation specifically in roles so important as the one, uh, the ones both of you uh, have been talking about. Because in the past, obviously, we have been uh, bringing a lot of guests in different positions, but never had uh, a, neither um, Parallel's uh, background or Cecile background. <laughs> uh, so very interesting. Thank you. Definitely. And I have a, a question for Amparo. Um, for you personally, how did you feel being a part of a group that was, you know, like you said, you're working on the insulin and of that being a part of Eli Lilly and, and a part of that, you know, project, right? Um, how did you, how does that make you feel? Um, you know, being that is super, super exciting. And having the satisfaction, I was just thinking about this the other day, long time ago, when I used to work as a clinical pharmacist, I would you know, adjust the dose of patients and then see the patients one-on-one -on -one and see how they improved. When I moved to work in Lilly, I missed that. I missed that personal connection and seeing that my work actually made, a, made a, an improvement in their lives. But I remember a conversation with a, with a more advanced colleague of mine and what he said really, really kind of made an impact because what he said is, but imagine that if you're working here and one of the drugs that you're working in actually gets to the market, you would be improving the lives of millions of people, even if you don't see them, right? But then it's, it's amazing how you would hear from them because I had colleagues, for example, that went on dulaglutide and they would talk to me and say, 
oh, this is so much better. My diabetes is so much better managed this way. Or, you know, you hear from, from patient testimonials. So in, in, in a way, it's a little bit more detached you, in, in that you don't see every single patient, but you have the ability of improving the lives of so many more people. So that, that's where I kind of, it fills my heart. I, I totally relate with you <laughs> in, that, <laughs> in that, because when you see a, a, a drug that, or a treatment that is out there uh, helping older, I mean, older people, and you say, I was part of that, even if you did a little bit in it, it's just, uh, it's just uh, really fulfilling. That's the beauty of, I think that's the beauty of this industry. And that's why most of us working in here feel so much, much passion about it. I have never met anybody in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry that don't have passion for this. That's definitely. And I have a question for both Cecilia and Amparo. Um, how do you, you both feel as Latinas uh, going through the process, right? Because it's one thing, you know, we, we constantly talk uh, about it here in LACR when we are talking about, you know, just applying to sites and CROs, but, you know, as, as a sponsor, as a pharmaceutical company, you know, how do you, um, how was the process for you going through the application process? How did you feel uh, when you went through the process, do you feel obviously welcomed? I mean, clearly, you know, you're here representing Lilia. I assume that you truly enjoy this company and, and how it's uh, allowing you to represent um, Latinos. Yeah, um, gosh, mine was a, a long time ago. Uh, and so uh, my journey um, essentially started back when I was in college. So um, I'm an IU grad uh, studying chemistry. And as I drove my little Toyota Tercel with no air conditioning and, um, <clears throat> you know, four cylinder and it could barely make it up a hill <clears throat> into the, the Lily parking lot, you know, I, I felt like I was so out of place. Um, and I'll tell you that when I walked into the, the building and, and again, the campus has changed somewhat since then, I was greeted by, by the HR rep and I immediately felt at home. I felt very welcome. Um, I felt like I I was in a place where I where I belonged, and um, and so that experience um, then just kind of allowed me to to just be myself through through that summer uh, job, and I I was able to do a, a number of different things. Um, I was told that I was uh, my colleagues would say that I I was making them look bad because I was working too hard. And, and I kept reminding myself that I didn't have to work slower just to make them feel better. I had to work at the pace that I felt comfortable with because I had to be true to myself. And, you know, we, we come from a very strong work ethic in our family. And, and for me, that was so important. And so um, I ended up uh, finishing my rotation, per se, my summer rotation in the virology department. I'm a chemistry major. I don't know anything about viruses. So... <laughs> So I finished my rotation in virology, and sure enough, the following summer, I was offered an internship in the virology department. Again, I'm a chemistry major. So, um, so fast forward, I, I hired in um, after my internship, and um, I have yet to do chemistry as a career. Um, I have done a, a number of different things, and, and I think that's the beauty of what, you know, Roberto was kind of alluding to is that don't limit your options just because, you know, this is my, this is what, what I think my career path should be, right? I came in as a biochemist and, um, and then moved through the project management organization because I wanted to see what happened to the molecules and all of that work that we were doing in research at the bench. How did that translate into um, decision making into putting those molecules into man? What is the data that that data package to make that feasible. Um, and so it's, um, it, it's been an amazing, amazing experience. But, but for me, what, what I took away from, from that initial engagement was that I, I could feel comfortable in uh, my, my one and only suit that I owned and uh, driving up in, in my little beat up car um, into an organization and a company that just looks so massive and um, so um, just so amazing. Um, and, and I just, I, I've just felt like I could be myself um, from, from that day forward. 
Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Very nice. Very, very motivating. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can see the passion in your eyes, Amparo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a similar, a similar story to Cecile's. I mean, I, I didn't, they flew me in this, this time because I was finishing my PhD in, in Florida. And I was looking for a job and actually really was the only company I interviewed for. Because when I, you know, they flew me in the process at that point was you had to give a presentation on your thesis on the work that you had done. And then they would have a day and a half of interviews with pretty much everybody in the department. So we had half an hour, 45 minutes, one after the other, go, 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 go. And then you would go to lunch with two people, you would go to dinner with two other people, and they ended the visit with, with a tour of the city by, by a realtor, because they already wanted to sell you the city. And, you know. But I remember that one of the things that impressed me the most was not something that, and obviously, they treated you with utmost respect, and they were super nice, and you felt extremely welcome. But the thing that really you know, stroke a chord for me was a, a taxi ride that I took between the universe, the, the hospital, the IU hospital where the Lilly Clinic was at that point, they were in the fifth and sixth floor. And that's where I would start working later on to the main Lilly campus. And the taxi driver spoke marvels of the company, the whole, you know, seven minutes that that taxi ride took. And I, and I thought to myself, this person, he has no investment in the company. He, he doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter to me if I, if I want to join or I don't want to join. This is a real, pure, unadulterated opinion. And, and it really made a difference. And he told me how the, the company fueled a lot of the, of the city's cultural life and how they, they gave funds to the museum, to the zoo, to the children's museum, to the arts organizations, to the, to the symphony, to, to everything. And I thought that was a that was a wonderful company to to be at because not only they focused on their own, you know, or on their own metier, on their own business, but they also built up the city, the city around them. And actually, years and years later, I'm part of the board of directors of the Indianapolis Library Foundation because of a connection through Lily, because that's one of the opportunities that we get is to participate in, 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 in board service in different, in different organizations in the city through Lily itself. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Amparo, you, you, said something, Amparo, you said something that I think it's, it's worthy of kind of re, reinforcing is that, you know, th that interview process is a long day event. Yes. <laughs> it's a very, it very long day. <laughs> It is a very long day, right? And, and that can look differently for, for different people. But even back 31 years ago, I did have a full day of interviews. And actually, I came in twice to interview because the first time I was not necessarily offered a science role or an opportunity in science. And I went back home and I talked to my parents and, you know, my dad was like, you know, take what they're offering because it's a foot in the door. And my mom said, by golly, you're worth more. You want science, you go for it. So I came back for a second round of interviews, another full day, uh, still in my same suit, by the way. I only had one suit. Um, but I tell you what, it's just, you know, it's it's that that uh, that tenacity, right? And and mm -hmm. really the that desire to say, I am good enough and I'm going to do this as many times as I have to in order to make myself be heard, be seen, be known. Yeah, wow, you guys, awesome. you both I know. are so motivated. <laughs> I want to work in really <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your stories. It's really, really impressive. And, um, you know, I, I was already amazed by Eli Lilly from the research that I had done, but uh, hearing specifically what... Um, you had mentioned uh, Amparo about the taxi driver. That for me is a big one. Um, I, I've always thought that if you can make impression on your community, that says a lot about the company in itself outside of what they're already doing for a focus, right? And so uh, hats off to Eli Lilly for that. Um, I rarely hear that about big companies. So that's amazing. 
thank you so much for what you'll do and what you bring to the company and for what you're doing right now with LICR and with all other organizations and really trying to make a dent in uh, inclu- uh, diversity and inclusion. So thank you. Really, really yeah, appreciate it. I, I really like the passion the four of you brought because each of you in your in your little part brings so much passion. I mean, I it's, it's, it's not even... Uh, I mean, not, not just the words, but we can see it in your eyes and in the, the when you're speaking that you want to give more and, and express everybody how wonderful it is uh, to work in a light lily and how open uh, a light lily is to diversity and, mm-hmm. and not just organization that is give me, give me, give me, but they are giving back to the community. Wow. Thank you. Well, uh, so we are 652. We're going to go ahead and go through the Q&A. So uh, we're going to start hitting some questions here. I know that we did cover a few through the, uh, through the different topics that we were hitting. So I'm going to kind of run through them real quick since we are kind of uh, shot in time. One moment. So I have one here. Uh, can you ask about working with Latino research sites? How do we connect with Eli Lilly to find out about their clinical studies? and that you have um, a closed website. I don't know if maybe that was a typo, but uh, I know we're kind of focusing right now more on uh, recruitment, but uh, just in case if y'all are aware of any sites there with Eli Lilly um, in regards to studies for research sites, I don't know if y'all are aware of that. So I can can share with you that we have a a site engagement organization uh, that is global. Um, those individuals um, are called clinical development uh, consultants, and, um, and they are responsible for um, engagement with sites and identification of sites for, for research purposes. Um, so those individuals um, are, we present them with the studies, and then they already have um, kind of a, a suite of of locations where uh, where we currently have experiences, depending on disease state. Uh, for me, it's oncology, so it's tumor type uh, indications, and and then um, and then from there, then they kind of present the studies to those different sites and ask them if they're willing to participate. Um, that can take a number of different forms. Um, mostly, it's uh, they engage with uh, with those sites uh, as a part of a, a live conversation. And I know that IU um, is one of our our main sites that we actually collaborate with. Um, but we also have our analytics team in the design hub that uh, does a much broader uh, outreach and um, looks for kind of common themes and common data and pieces of information based on the protocol design, the endpoints, and the patient population, and they try to do a match uh, to then say, here are a list of potential sites. And that that site list we do also provide to our clinical development uh, consultant staff uh, for them to do that broader outreach. So the name again, uh, Cecilia, is Clinical Development Consultant. They're, They're called CDCs, and they're a part of the site engagement organization Okay, so we can maybe maybe uh, the clinics can look for somebody that has this title working in the lightly lean in Lincoln. Yes, yes, so that you can uh, get more information on that. And I'm assuming, of course, uh, just granted that we are here today talking about recruitment for for diverse uh, for diverse populations. Um, in that case, I'm, of course, Eli Lilly, I'm sure, is also looking for like Latin subjects. Um, using the diverse data and things like that for research. So um, I would assume, right, that these would be the contacts that they would go to if they had those questions. Yeah, we've got, so there are a number of different groups that are working on diversity and clinical trials. So we have, as a part of the design hub, uh, I have a colleague of mine that is working on diversity and clinical trials in collaboration with the diversity and inclusion um, office. And so I think Roberto kind of alluded to this. We, we've got, it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach um, when we talk about diversity and specific to diversity in clinical trials, we're really trying to identify, you know, what is that diverse, uh, what does diversity look like and what does it mean? Um, we're talking about investigators and investigator sites. And what does that mean from a patient recruitment perspective? 
um, because we realize that we, as in pharma in general, want to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing is representative of the broader population, not just, you know, um, a, a very small segment. Um, and we also realize that the way in which we recruit uh, Latin uh, patients or um, individuals into our clinical trials may look very different. I mean, for, for me, when, um, when we were considering clinical trials for my daughter, who is a cancer survivor, um, we, we went in as a family, right? I mean, it was like all of us in like this really small room trying to talk to, to multiple doctors about, you know, what were the options um, whereas, you know, that may look very different to, uh, to other um, cultures where, you know, it may just be, you know, just one single family member coming with them or no one at all uh, coming with them to, to talk about, you know, different options. So, um, so it, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to see kind of what is that patient journey and then also where are they? Um, because that's not easy to define either. So there's a lot of data and uh, insights that we're collecting through this process. Thank you. We have another question directed to you. Is this how, um, have you had the opportunity to work with interns in Design Hub? Yes, I have. And uh, I will tell you that um, several of them have actually, uh, one was a, a PharmD student uh, who actually um, has a, a full-time position now. And then there's uh, another individual who then moved on to a, a full-time position. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, been phenomenal. Um, and one of them was Latinx and one was not. Uh, so, you know, just working with the students is always like really exhilarating uh, because you get such a different perspective and, and it's so fresh um, that that it's just, it's really energizing. Awesome. Thank you. And then just to kind of stay on that topic, this might be for also Roberto. Um, so I know that y'all said that there's a, a slew of uh, internships, right? But uh, do y'all also accept uh, international internships? Mm. Yeah. Great question. Awesome. Yes, we do. It, but it depends on every single case and position. I mean, it's very specific. For sure. Thank you for that. So we have another question. Um, I know the importance of networking, but sometimes hiring managers and recruiters don't receive direct messages or show their mail, uh, email. How can we overcome that? Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's something that is very important. And I know that very close to the hour and I will be as brief as possible. If you, before you reach any point of contact within any organization, make sure that you're prepared. Don't just go and, and, and contact that uh, person just, just, just to connect. It, have, an, have a plan before uh, making that connection. Let me give you an example. If you're very serious about an, an opportunity at Lilly, make sure that that position comes up Make sure that you have those qualifications. And then if you have that information ready, make that connection. My name is Luis, and I, I am very interested to work at Lilly. I see this position open where I have the qualifications, and here is my resume. What you're going to encounter, I mean, there's a lot of people that they want to help you, but it is not easy probably to connect the dots, not even for people that work in recruitment. I mean, just make the life easy for them. It is better for, for, a, for example, somebody at Lilly to share like a, oh, this is Luis, and he is already applied for this position, and just, can you take a look at his application? Something like that is more effective than just sending a message like, a, hola, Amparo, I want to connect with you. Hi. I mean, that is potentially not going to go anywhere. I mean, <laughs> just make sure that your expectations are clear. You need to make the life easy for, for even recruiters. I mean, the I mean, sometimes there's like a thousands of openings in organizations. I mean, and not every single recruiter has access to the information of all, but you can make the life easier and connect the dots for them by basically simplifying the task for them if you want to, to really be serious about your, 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 your application process within an organization like Chile. Thank you. And the last one, uh, where can we find more details on the CDC that Cecil was mentioning? Uh, the clinical development consultant. Yes. Or career site, careers at Lily. Well, I well, uh, is it was careers a uh, careers dot Lily dot com. Uh, check our openings, review all of them. I mean, I mean, you, I know that probably that was your main main interest, but again, expand your 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 opportunities and take a look of what currently are we are hiring because there's a lot of different opportunities that may be interesting for you. Uh, but be on the lookout. I mean, 
sometimes positions are very, very attractive and they receive a lot of applications and they will close very, very quickly. Uh, you can leverage the technology that we offer with our career site, sign up for job alerts or join our talent community because that's another way that we can look for you or in, your, for your information as well. Most definitely. Well, thank you so much. Um, we will make sure to, after we have this recording, post it up on YouTube and have it on our social media for everybody to come and see. We will make sure that we also um, put the link of all of y'all's LinkedIn so that if, if any individuals would like to uh, connect with you all in regards to jobs or anything like that outside of what they've already probably seen online, um, they'll be able to do so. Uh, before we end today, you guys, uh, I did want to mention two things. Um, Next month is going to be our uh, PI series on Latin American doctors uh, through research sites throughout the Latin America. You definitely don't want to miss it. There's going to have four or five doctors that we're going to be interviewing. So uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. And even one of them, actually, I believe uh, Carlos Valverde is uh, um, a CRO owner, correct, Monica? I think. Yes. Yes, yes he is. So it's going to be very interesting. It from, uh, from Colombia. <laughs> yes, it's going to be very interesting. So there's that. And also we wanted just for y'all to, to mention to everybody, today we actually had an interview with Telemundo. Um, it won't be aired until December, but uh, it will be, um, there will be a digital version and it'll also, its affiliates will also be recording it in English. So, you know, uh, we will be airing that, uh, we'll be sharing that as well on our social media whenever that comes out. But we're very excited. Uh, LICR is definitely getting some, gaining some footing with uh, different, different areas and industries. So, you know, you, you know, we're going to be seeing, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of us. Please, please, please share this video for those that um, are watching right now and those that will be watching later. Uh, please share this video. So anybody and everybody can get this information. It's very valuable, valuable information. And we thank Eli Lilly so much and all the guest speakers here today. You guys were great. Um, we really do hope to have you on again, uh, just to give some more information to our members uh, as we go. Uh, but thank you so much, Monica, Judy, Chris, I don't know if you want to say anything before we close it out. No, thank you so much no, for thank bringing you. all that information and especially for bringing your passion. <laughs> I know yes. I saw in the in, in the participants uh, um, one of our, uh, of our very good uh, members, she's Marjorie, and she's very passionate. And uh, uh, listening to you make me think about her too. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for all the information you provided. And hopefully, this helped a lot of people who were interested and in maybe do meet some kind of qualification and now they know where to go apply. So I think this is definitely very helpful to a lot of those people who are going to be watching this or will tune in to watch this later on. Yes, and we had one member to say thank you for this presentation together. It is much appreciated. The representation of the culture as well as the highlighted the uh, networking and clinical research. So thank you guys very much. We really appreciate it. We hope to bring more of this to you. Thank you again, Eli Lily. Um, Till next time. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Thank you.